Hey, what's up? Um, we're going to be doing some more malware analysis stuff in this video. So here we go. Uh, I'm on my uh, Linux virtual machine here, and I got a couple files for us to look at. I got three Visual Basic script, you can tell by the extension here, .vbs files. Um, this is going to be raw and that I have literally never opened these files whatsoever before in my life. So um, I'm just going to screen record, you know, me doing it and we'll see where we go. I guess this might uh, be pretty heavily edited, but I have literally no idea. I, I have not opened these whatsoever. So what should we start with, ladies and gentlemen? Um... We'll go for the short boy. Let's go for impule. You know what? Let's make directories for these. Let's go for impule, whatever that means. Uh, and let's move the VBS file into that. Um, so let's take a look at what he is. <laughs> oh, I like this one. This is, this is fun. Um, let's call this, uh, yeah, we should start to clean this. So let's go like zero one, uh, zero zero cleaned, I guess. Uh, looks like it's creating a W script shell. Is there a Visual Basic script plugin for Sublime Text to get some color in this install package? Package control? Where are you? Oh, he's loading repositories. Okay, whatever. Um, we know anyway that that v v v v v v v n n n n n n n is W script shell. So let's call that a uh, W script shell. And that seems to be just about everywhere else. String reverse is going to be a good PowerShell boy. You can tell that because it's including PowerShell here, concatenating it all together. What is going on? Why is Sublime Text taking forever to load these repositories? Oh, no. Speak of the devil. Visual basic script. VB script. Installing that package. Let's see how we do. Why is it taking so long? Oh my goodness. Uh, let's just call this variable, you know, a little PowerShell. Because we know that's what it's going to be. PowerShell. Uh, and we could probably literally just like remove this. We can just call that this, the string that we know it's going to be. PowerShell with the space in it. Uh, if you can't tell, that's because of uh, this spells PowerShell backwards, all concatenated. And, uh, you know, we, we reverse it. So there's that. PowerShell. Did it have a capital S? Not that it literally matters whatsoever. No, it's a lowercase s. With the space. Okay. Uh, so set syntax visual basic script. There we go. Now we get some colors in here. We're going to do a run command with our PowerShell string. Adding in no exit, comma, co command. I'm sure that's command. Invoke expression, new object. What the F? That's a lot of plus signs. Down <laughs> literally every single empty strings are just being concatenated together here. All right, we got to nerf that. So let's uh, replace all the back ticks that are being used as escape sequences. Um, we'll replace each uh, character that it tries to escape just following it with itself. So that's a little bit more readable and legible. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, John from the future here, real quick. Some of you people, you know the ones, you know, those people might be saying, John, why did you bother including the character after the backtick if you could literally just replace the backtick with nothing? You wouldn't have to worry about the next character. To that I say, you're right. I am a goddamn idiot. <laughs> Sorry. All right, back to the video, everybody. Bye. And we should also go ahead and remove these single quotes concatenated with single quotes because they're doing nothing there we go um did i do something wrong there single quote with a plus sign. oh with a plus sign uh interpreted literally in regular expressions please control enter there we go mm, what do we got powershell invoke expression new object not that web client download string the past in his strings that's kind of neat invoking wait how does this do this Invoke expression dot invoke dot JPEG. So we're downloading a JPEG, right? Oh, and then we're going to exit, but we're going to hide that window and not show it and wait for that command to exit. And then we're going to remove our W script dot shell object. Then we're going to sleep for an hour. Yeah. No, 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 no. A thousand is one second. So a minute. Yes, that's math. Yeah. Or no, no, no. A thousand is one second. A minute. Yeah. 
Math is hard. Empty string. We'll call that variable empty string. And then a shell follows just after it as a string. So create object. OK, it's just going to literally call that shell application. Namespace 7, we know from previous videos, namespace 7 is your current user's uh, like startup directory to auto run and auto start uh, once you were to log in. So it's going to copy this script, this w script dot full name to 1048. What? No, you idiot. That math does not add up. Copy this. Oh, it literally tells us. Thank you. Nice comment explaining what's happening there. Uh, let's do the fun stuff and let's go figure out what's going on with this uh, PowerShell syntax. It's pulling from this domain. Please, please, please still be live. I would love to see it. You love to see it. Curl tack K because it's going to use HTTPS and uh, we should probably just go ahead and nerf that. What you got for me? Yes. Oh my goodness. There's stuff. Um, can I T that out to 02 PowerShell.ps1? Yeah. All righty. So let's check out our 02 PowerShell.ps1. What do we got here, boys and girls? Uh, completely random string name to a lot of nonsense. Although, however, that is seemingly just a binary. I'm pretty sure. It's using ats with zeros to denote a zero character. You can see by that replace method up there. So let's clean that up. I'm going to just use Python to do that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll use Python to do that. Go. <laughs> all right, now let's double click literally all of that. Sorry. That was very bright, very fast, very quickly. Um, and let's slap that in. There we go. There we go. Um, and we will call that variable hex code because we can tell that it is hex. Now we got another function over here, E-A-Q-F-J-I-L. And you do some weird stuff. Oh, you are interpreting hex. Yeah, you're just converting hex to bytes. Uh, the way you can tell, right, is it, it takes a parameter, which we will call... Uh, argument one. How about that? And this thing will be a argument list. Excuse me, this this new variable cccvvv56000 will be a byte list. Will be a list of bytes. Um, that's going to be the length of the argument passed in divided by two. So it's cut in half, right? Um, that makes sense because a byte represented in hex will just be two kind of digits or two characters a, a through f zero through nine so we'll call that um unhexlified <laughs> using some python language there so then we just loop through the entire argument that we passed in um incrementing by two taking that index and then converting it with base 16 right so we are unhexlifying that so let's call that function unhexlify ta-da Okay, now we have even more. What the heck? Um, TTTS 0788888, although, however, that's going to be obfuscated lit once again uh, with that replace technique. So let's steal all that. I'll use Python to do that because it's literally the exact same syntax. Uh, again, just pasting that in, double clicking on all this. Brace your eyes for some white text. There we go. And let's replace that line with that. Oh, crap. You know, I should have saved this as like a 02A cleaned, uh, PowerShell cleaned thing. Because I want to keep the original for posterity's sake. So let's call that um, other hex, I guess. And then we unhexlify that. Um, decoded other hex. And then we decode the original hex code that we saw at the very, very top of this script. So we'll call that one just decoded hex. Oh. Hello. Hello, computer. Are you there? Okay. Decoded hex. Ta-da. And then we'll use reflection. We'll use some uh, neat little magic 
in the Windows world to load in this entire thing. So we know that this will be a .NET assembly, right? So we can open this thing up in ILSpy or DNSpy. And then we do a get type based off these class names. Oh gosh. And get method invoke null objects. See when, whoa, where are we going? What are we doing? Red services with our decoded hex? There's stuff happening. Okay. Uh, we should totally go ahead and determine what these things are. Uh, because decoded other hex looks like it's going to be the inflect the the reflection loaded com program <laughs> and we can unhexify that and create a file from it and then see what this thing ends up running and doing with these function calls here doing something with reg services.exe uh and also the decoded hex up here so let's do it um i'll close out of python because if we were to simply echo all that out on our terminal, we can use xxd, tack r, tack p to reverse and print out all of that hex. Uh, we'll call that other hex dot, is this going to be an exe or a dll? Probably a dll. Take a guess, right? Let's check out that other hex. It's a dll. We were right on the money, guys. Um, it is a mono.net assembly, which means that we can open it up in ILSpy or DNSpy. I'll use ILSpy because the internet gets angry when I do, and for some reason I find enjoyment in that. I'm just kidding. Uh, there's literally no reason why I use that over the other. Aside from the fact that, um, weird, what did, what did I call this? More Visual Basic script. Impule other hex.dll. There we go. Uh, let's make this text a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. Kablammy. Um, let's go 18 because 20 is just too much. Okay, what do we got here? Class library 2. Nice. That's a good default Visual Studio code or Visual Studio name for the project. Um, and we've got some little classes here to work with. We got a good CGM T4 AGO, etc. Um, and we also have some resources loaded in. No, we don't. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, module stuff. Nothing really usually in there. Let's look at the code, ladies and gentlemen. Talk is cheap. Show me the code, as they say. Ah, uh, there's nothing happening in that function. It is already expanded, and there's literally nothing happening. Thankfully, however, that is not the one that this thing calls. We can see it's the E30RKK, etc., um, so let's check out that function. Oh gosh, took a little bit of time to decompile. We got other read-only random name variables for integer pointers here. Um, other peculiar ones. These are just laying out struct, though. Oh, those must be like the, like the types for some Win32 API stuff callbacks. We are loading in create process, right? So we could probably rename that. We are loading in the get thread context, so we could probably rename that. Wow, 64, get thread context, set thread context, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Virtual alloc ex, remote, resume thread. Oh, goodness. Okay, so this will do something shady. We can know that for sure. What's going on in that function? Did we define that already? No, we're like the very top of this, so. If this thing, <laughs> num equals two, otherwise num equals false. Excuse me, num equals four. I was reading that if false. That's never going to happen, guys. That's not, not going to do anything. And then go to IL this thing, which is literally the next line. Okay, cool. Result flag num two, etc. While true, so all the time, we're going to check that num. I'm assuming this is going to end up checking like architecture. Can I go see what this does? Discarded unreachable code. Oh, that's not helpful for me. Okay. La la la, let's scroll back up. Gosh, there's a lot in this WTF. What the heck is happening? Oh my goodness. Okay, okay, okay. I, I got my sanity back momentarily. Case five, which we know is not gonna happen because it can either be two or four so far <laughs> flag two is going to equal that function um if flag two 
oh, it's going to equal not that function, seemingly, and num6, continue. And if that's set, checked. What the heck is checked? Is that a function? Where's that coming from? Num equals seven. Result equals true. I'm just reading, reading things right now. None of this makes sense to me. <laughs> There's that other function that is called discarded unreachable code. So there are segments that are just kind of wonky. This other one is up here. This other one is up here. We define a struct. Oh, is that an inline function for checked? How does that happen? A lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff. That's a lot going on. Otherwise, case four. Oh, this is another while loop sort of thing. Wait, 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 wait. One of those is the only functions it's called. Q, Y, P, I, M. And that's the very, very top one. That we oh I mean it's I guess it's this class oh no 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 but it in, it invokes one specific one doesn't it yeah z l n h a q y y q of course so let's control f for that guy that's the function that we're looking at right there okay um, we run that thing again we run that thing again oh it's literally oh god dang it's literally the thing we were just looking at what am I doing what am I doing randomness equals converting that thing, converting that thing to a type handle. Bull flag, VODK, 44 MLM. Man, you guys really aren't doing me any favors naming your variables complete nonsense. I gotta say, num8 in 32.60. What the heck? 32.60. You take an argument somewhere. We know. We know you take an argument somewhere. I mean, I guess it's going to be an argument to this string yeah uh it doesn't have a name what what how do you how do you refer to the variable how do you refer to that parameter do you <laughs> we're calling reg services.exe somewhere buffer block copy oh is this going to be some shell code at some point is there going to be shell code in this <laughs> block copy if that thing with the thing and then do it <laughs> me trying to read code that doesn't make any sense because it has no proper naming and it's just a bunch of switch case statements I could like sure we could uh, explore through this a little bit more but uh, truthfully I don't think we need to I'll be honest. Get process by ID. Does this thing return a process ID? And that thing does a thing? Nope. Nope. That doesn't do a lot. That doesn't do a lot. Oh, a lot of these are teeny weeny. A lot of these just like are, are wrappers for other functions. That's dumb. P0 seems to be a process ID, I'm assuming, or a process object. A process ID makes the most sense to me because this is referenced in other places. We could try to explore this and like copy and paste it in Sublime Text to change up some of those variables. Do you guys know if I can change variable names like within D DNSpy or ILSpy? I don't know. Not going to lie. Um, okay. Okay. I think I've had enough of that one. <laughs> I think, um, we had our fun. It's doing weird stuff. That's good. Um, oh, wait a second. We didn't even see what the other one, we didn't even see what the other hex was. You guys, you should have told me. I mean, this is still going to be stringing nonsense. So I'll spy, get rid of that tool tip, please. I don't need to see that. Uh, die. Okay, thanks. IL spy is gone. Let's do another echo pacing and all that hex. Let's do an xxd tag r tag p. Uh, redirect it to uh, argument dot dll. I guess. Yeah, argument dot dll is another GUI program. Mono dot net assembly for Microsoft Windows. I didn't actually do like any other stuff to check out other strings in this. 
Um, I doubt there'll be actually anything worthwhile or interesting because it already all seems to be relatively well obfuscated with the random variable names. Yep, and we can see all those in there. So not extremely useful. What about our argument.dl before we, before we crack that thing open? Uh, get type, get method, invoke, create instance. Client.exe? What are you doing? All right, let's, that, one, that one deserves a little bit of love. Let's open it up in ILSpy. Uh, if I pass an argument to ILSpy, we'll just like know to do it. Other things that I don't know. We called this more visual basic script argument at the LL. What do we got? Lime. What? Lime program. What is that? Client run. Okay, so it takes a client object. Have we looked at this before? Have we looked at this sort of thing before? Where's the client? Is that going to be defined in like the Lime connection? Probably. Yeah, there it is. Client. Okie dokie. Send buffer size. Connecting to config.host. There's got to be a config here somewhere. Ping. Keep alive ping. String to bytes. Send it to the packet in the... TCP send, packet fixer. Okay, so there is functionality to have command and control. Is that fair to say? You think, am I am I crazy in that? And like, look, we reach out to a server. Yep, we literally create a socket connection based off of the host and the port. So what else we got? How can we read that config? Where does that config live? Mm, there's a lot of stuff in lime.helper. Send info will take a get hard disk serial number, get IP, environment machine name, environment username, camera, <laughs> computer info, get OS full name, get system, get the CPU kind, get total physical memory, get AV, nice. More get antivirus, check in the firewall products, port, key, et cetera, get active window. Um, mm. So get IP, get hard disk serial number, system drive, et cetera, et cetera. Get camera, which are for drivers, if it has a camera or not. That's kind of crazy. Get system, that looks like it is um, getting the CPU or not, get Win32 processor. Get AV, that's gonna end up doing some WMI stuff. You can tell the management object searcher and root slash security center variables there. Display name, yeah, 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 yeah. Get CPU, reads it out of a registry value. Nice. And active window, okay. So just, Oh, that generates the ID. Wow. Okay. So based off of all of those things, that's the ID. Prevent sleep. Run. Execution state is going to end up being that thing. String converter. These are all a couple of convenience functions, right? We are in the helper class, seemingly. Or what do we got? Hello. That's all. Decompress. Okay. Compressing a gzip stream, encoding and decoding from base 64. Fair enough. Lime native methods. These seem to be Win32 API calls that we pull in. So get volume information, get foreground window, uh, get window text, maybe? It doesn't actually say what function. They're the entry point that it calls on cap get driver description and set thread execution state. Huh. Okie dokie. Let's check out the Lime packets. Packet handler, what do we got? So I'm assuming if this is going to be a packet handler, that would mean that it runs server side, right? 
handler. Um, I mean, I guess, I guess does, is the victim the server in this case? No, I feel like that would be the client, right? But it handles a packet, right? IE, GPL, LP, UNV, call process by name, array one, default, get string. Uh, what are these? What are those bytes going to spell out? Let's replace all those new lines with a space. Let's grab this and then let's go back to a, hello? Where, what am I doing over there? <laughs> Let's run a Python 3. Let's do a chr of x for x in that list. Get type. Ooh, okay. So all you're doing was just carving together some other syntax. There wasn't actually... Okay. Same exact thing, basically. Call by name some other obfuscation methods encode get executable path execute this one though looks like it has more to it um let's do that one more time so chr of x for x in all of that create instance okay Object call by name. Looks like it's adding in some file and extension kind of thing based off of the ID. If registry current user open sub key MD5 is writable. What? Whatever, you know? It, where is the config file? Lime settings config, ooh. What is, <laughs> excuse me? Let's check out this IP address real quick. Let's check out that port. Revenge rat. Um, 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 um. String key is revenge rat. Let's go to showdown on that real quick. Check out that IP address. Kablammy. Dallas, United States. What's going on? Didn't we look up a, a... What? Is that right? Let's look for IP locator. Paste in that one. Dallas, Texas. For real. Okay. I feel like we've seen a lot of Dallas, Texas for some reason. <laughs> uh, the ID looks like it is base 64. Um, base 64 minus D. And Mr. Ahmed, excuse me? Mr. Ahmed's revenge rat? Current mutex is that thing. Splitter is Nyan. Mr. Ahmed revenge rat. Is this a known thing? Cryptid Revenge Rat. Ooh, what are you? Thank code Mr. Ahmed Crypto Fud. Oh, there's a strange email. IL Spy, I'm going to need you to stop throwing in a random tooltip whenever you want. Free download bypass Windows Defender fully undetected asynchronous rat MP3 file. <laughs> Where's Mr. Ahmed in this? Thank code Mr. Ahmed. Yeah, dude. Check it out. Uh, get Express VPN online. The VPN that just works. It just works, ladies and gentlemen. Um, cryptid Revenge Rat. Revenge, Revenge Rat Malware. Oh. Revenge Rat is a remote access Trojan discovered by our good friends over at Cisco Talos. Revenge Rat Malpedia. 
on any run. Threat post has something over. But I want to know about Mr. Ahmed. <laughs> is he... Is this his, like, claim to fame? Revenge Rat is remote access Trojan discovered by this thing. Um, bleeping Computer provides technical analysis. Oh, heck yeah. I'm loving the Bleeping Computer, guys. That's all that New Jersey cybersecurity is going to be willing to tell me. Mmm, Revenge Rat. One nine three. Wait, that's not the same IP address, is it? That's not the same IP address that we have, but it's kind of close. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Using SendGrid. Hey, that looks kind of similar to what we had. I mean, it, it's just a running PowerShell. But. Okay. What do you got for me, ZDNet? Fortinet sees it. Visual Basic Script is then able to call a shell.application object that generates a new Visual Basic script file. Oh, and we do have a couple others that we should tinker with. Ooh, one of these are going to end up being in batch mode. Able to receive commands from command and control, IP address, volume data, machine names, usernames, whether or not a webcam has been detected. Yeah. And then it gets into WSA trap, which is seemingly different. Revenge Rat, the Gorgon group. Is Mr. Ahmed in there? Is Mr. Ahmed in our good uh, Gorgon group? Gee, gee, gee. Unit 42 researchers have been tracking, etc. Um... Technical analysis and some of the attacks as well as attribution links with Pakistani actors have been already depicted by 360 and TUSEC, which I find interesting connection to larger groups of attackers Unit 42 which has been tracking, which we are calling the Gorgon Group. Is that the thing from Legend of Zelda? The Gorgons? Um. I don't know. Gordon? What is it called in Legend of Zelda? Legend of Zelda. No, it is. Oh, Goron. No, no second G. <laughs> cool. The Gorgons. Oh, Remco's malware. I've had some fun with that before. Let's uh, see what we got. Revenge Rat. Shelter applications, CMD. Is there anything different in this? Oh, they call they they found the same .vbs file that the other one did. Downloader downloads something here. Microsoft script file. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Registry keys. And Microsoft. Executing Revenge Rat and Persistence. There they go ahead and run it. Kind of as we saw. Connecting the TC2 server. Atomic. Nuclear explosion. So that's, I guess, what it is normally called. The IP address is... Wait, 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 wait. Is that IP address the same as ours? That looks, that looks more promising. Oh, it's so stinking close. Or was that the same one as last time? I get excited for no reason. <laughs> oh, port numbers are 5478, and that's not our port number either. I'm just dumb. That's all. IL Spy, stop with the tooltip, man. 
Just as we started analyzing the malware, unfortunately, the two command and control servers have been shut down. Tell me about it, bro. Like, story of my life over here. Not that I'm actually doing anything remotely worthwhile. <laughs> um... The all okay, so if this is Revenge Rat, all of this tradecraft from what folks have seen previously. Um oh, last seen like today though. According to any run. Revenge Rat is a freely available remote access tool written in .NET and C sharp. Is there like a link to the source code or something <laughs> if it's freely available? Silence. Oh, come on. No, this this just takes me to their website. Excuse me, that's not that's not. All that helpful. Um, breaking it down. They're using a wscript.shell object, but then they're creating a scheduled task. Um, yeah. Oh, they do a little reflection, kind of the same way we did. Ooh. Analyzing this function, we found several command magic strings, the researcher wrote, the most notable of which are the P command, which asks the malware to collect the victim's topmost window tile, the IE and LP commands that ask malware to manipulate the system registry, the UNV command packet, meanwhile, allows an attacker to send malicious assembly language or ASM code of the malware to be executed in memory. We did see that. We did see that in that packet handler, right? Yeah, P, IE, PNC. GPL, UNV, and that's going to end up running assembly. Yeah. Like shellcode doing a thing? Neat. Obviously horrific and evil, but still neat. But a fucking IL spot. Stop. As part of the second stage infection chain, version 1.6 of WSHRAT is also executed. Huh. Well, I guess we could take a look at the others now that we kind of know what this thing is. But Revenge Rat telling us the config. Mr. Ahmed. <laughs> Where are you, Mr. Ahmed? That doesn't help me if I just Google Mr. Ahmed. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. That was just like out of out of a broken habit. Mr. Ahmed Crypter. Oh, what is this? What the F? Get out of here, IL spy. I don't like where I am right now. Silent Doc exploit bypass Google Chrome 2020 silent 100%. Crypto Rad Photon. Mr. Ahmed. That's got to be him. <laughs> he has a YouTube channel. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We have to go check him out. What are you doing, Mr. Ahmed? Mmm. Another one bites the dust. This account has been terminated due to multiple or severe violations of YouTube policy against spam, deceptive practices, and misleading content or other terms of violation or violation. <laughs> He's gone. We YouTube took him down. It's cancel culture, everybody. Look at that fully undetected at zero out of 40. No workplaces to show, no schools to show. Other accounts with a similar name. I don't know if Facebook is the right marketplace to showcase. Oh, and all these videos are down, aren't they? Oh my gosh. I didn't realize those were all YouTube videos when I was looking at them, but like they're literally all taken down. <laughs> these are as recent as January. Is there anything that isn't a YouTube video? Who keeps liking these? All of these are YouTube videos. Not, not the right way, my guy. 
not the right. Oh, this one is. Is it still a thing? World of Hacker. These are still live. Now, granted, I don't exactly know what I'm looking at. I'll be honest. Um, none of these look like they should be on the internet. Um, what, what do we got here? Get out of here, YouTube. No, no, no. Um, what are you trying to do here? Oh, is this the VMware break? Yeah. So, Mr. Ahmed's YouTube account. Is this a video on installing <laughs> installing VMware? What a hack. Um There's more VMware. What are you doing? Oh, Kali Linux. Installing Kali Linux. Oh no. Oh no. Get me out of here. I want to go home. I want to go home. Tor. What is the dark web? Avengers Endgame. All right, dude. Hey, sub to sub to World of Hacker. All right, I'm done. I can't look at this anymore. <laughs> We found Mr. Ahmed. I think. Doing our detective work. Yeah. All right, let's take a breather and uh, let's get back to it in a moment. All right, that was fun. Um, kind of went down a little bit more of a PowerShell and C Sharp Road than I kind of wanted to, but uh, let's take a look at some of these other guys here. Let's take a look at uh, Impulus. Let's see if they are any way somewhat related to. Uh, oh my gosh, can I type, please? Pew oh my gosh. Let's see if they're related to our Revenge Rat here. Let's um. How many Sublime Text windows do we have open right now? Too many. Here we go. Oh, what is this? Oh, these are so good. What are you? What? Look at this randomness. These are just straight up bytes. Just straight up non-printable bytes in the Visual Basic script. There's a lot of these. Check out my horizontal scroll bar down there. That's dope. That's got to be a whole other binary. That's got to be. Or like just more layers of obfuscated code <laughs> what do we got ladies and gentlemen what are we doing here uh all right we'll call that everyone's favorite big blob of nonsense good good uh empty string oh wait no empty string it gets added on to yeah for i to the length of big blob of nonsense so for every single one of those it will what happened? What happened to my empty string? Oh, 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 oh. There are, there are two empty strings. What? What? Second? No. We, we, we hold that. We keep that in something. And we execute it. So it, maybe it's, it's, it's just got to be more code. More code. Ta-da. We and it together after we just kind of loop through all of it. What is the ASC function in Visual Basic Script? Visual Basic Script ASC function. Thanks, Google. Oh, it converts it to ASCII. Okay, it's definitely just adding more and more to it. But is it concatenating this? I'm confused. It does something. And mid takes the middle? Mid function. Oh, it's on an index. Mid function returns a specified number of characters from a string. Uh, oh. 
okay. So this weird thing just happens then. Yeah? Can Visual Basic Script just do like a write out, write to console? Visual Basic Script. Uh, it's probably like a wscript.echo or something. Wscript echo. Or just echo. Echo. C script will run it from the console. Oh, so it needs wscript. Yeah. Wscript.shell. Where are you getting wscript? Or is it just like in the current context or something? Let's let's mess with it. Um Let's grab all of this. Oh no, the printable character is gonna get wonky. So I need to pull this out to my host some way. All right. Let's um impulus. Oh shoot, and I never made a copy of it. I'm a dumbo. Whatever. Python three opt HP server go. Okay, so now let's get to my host. Let's open up a web browser. Oh shoot, what is that IP address? Wow, that's a lot of stuff. 10.0.0.17. No, go to my host, please. 10.0.0.17, 8,000. Now we got this Visual Basic script, dope. Um, let's edit that with Sublime Text. And, oh gosh. Thank you. Now let's not execute it and let's do a wscript dot echo. Oh shoot. I didn't like save the name of it. It's gonna be this thing, right? That's our more code variable. Yeah. Let's hope so. So we aren't executing it anymore. Um, now let's get a command prompt open. Let's go to my desktop and let's try and run C script. C script. There we go. Um, C script on. Hello? Where did you go? Or no, you're in my downloads, aren't you? Gosh dang it. Let's put it on my desktop. Okay. CLS. Let's do a little C script on our Impulus Visual Basic script. There we go. Get something new. Get some more Visual Basic script in there. Um, this. Okay, so let's copy all that. And let's bring that back into the virtual machine here. Uh, so this is like, what, second stage? And this is pretty readable. I say that now. <laughs> um, empty string. Shell. Looks like they're doing the exact same technique. To just run shell.application as a string. Copy it in. Yep. Okay, so that's the exact same technique as... Uh, Split equals Najif. Ready? Those are weird comments. EXC nim execute. A equals FIH. What is FIH? Create object, expand environmental string, temp. He answers here referring to daytime now. Those comments are not that. He does not mention anything about looking for a unique num. He does not mention anything about looking for a unique num. What does those mean? What do you mean? Download. That's another function that is seemingly created. Create a shell object. Run C M D. Character 34. And S file. What is character 34 going to do? Checking out Python again. Let's do a chr34. Oh, 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 it's just adding strings to it. Okay. Then we go to 
get information. Yeah, using XML HTTP so we can make some post requests. Grab our computer name, grab our username. So we have a user. Let's move this out. The user agent, we capture the hardware device seemingly. Where is HUD coming from? Oh gosh. Oh, that's another function call. Okay, and security is very likely another function call. Oh gosh. Yeah, it's just right beneath it. Using WMI to, where's that end function? This is the most direct answer to the simple question asked and is a proven direct, what the heck? Proven direct substitute to Java's system current. That makes no sense. These all seem like revenge rat stuff, at least from everything that we just read. That's it. So this is just another just just another command and control. Another C2. I mean, okay. Added its persistence. Tells it that it is ready for information. It gets data out, and if it is zero, then it will execute. Or, no, 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 no. A0 has got to be like the index split on that. And that will write a file. Oh, all in temp. Okay. If it is nim, then it will add persistence. Yeah. W end? Oh, that must be a while loop end. So all of this should be in its own loop. Okay. Run, can run stuff. There's nothing in this loop to actually execute anything though, is there? No. Which is weird. Hardware devices, all throughout here. Download. Again, using get, um, saving it. No, what the heck? S location? Oh, that's just where it's gonna end up saving it. Yeah, and then run C. What is C set to? I can't search for C all that e easily, unless I do like a C equals. Oh, create object. Adds it to startup, download 1C, and then it runs it. Okay. Oh, and that is something from NIM. Okay. So it does have the capability to run those through downloading stuff. So it's all just command and control through stuff that it downloads. I guess. <laughs> Getting all that information. Interesting. I don't think there's anything else. There aren't any other layers to pull through here. But this must be WSH rat, right? From our Googling, revenge rat, um, because WSH rat, what do you got for me? No, 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 no. Oh, wow. You can just straight up download it. Excuse me? <laughs> Buy now. Order now. Oh, YouTube videos. This is, this has been tense, man. It's a whole gooey to it. Okay, that's fine. Who posted this? Who shared this video? Is it Mr. Ahmed? No, it's WSH rat. <laughs> I need to buy this, but some people said it does not work good in newer Windows 10 operating systems. Does latest version works good and excellent on Windows 10? Yes. Bro, can you upload a PDF exploit tool Android? What does that mean? No comments were deleted. 
Dope. Um, you have another product, apparently, don't you? Look at this. Live view keylogger. Other features. Guys, you can go to this website. WSHsoftware.site is a public thing. RDP viewer. Process explorer. Paste code here to run remote scripts. Nice. Hidden browser. Reverse proxy. Remote VNC. Buy me with Bitcoin. Hey. What about Dogecoin? Over here in New York. Oh, gosh. Okay. That was fun. What do you got? Houdini. Wasn't a lot of, uh, wasn't a lot of whole technical information in that. So let's go back. Let's keep Googling around. Although that was a different IP address, right? Um, this one, nine, four, three, seven, one, seven, two. Let's check that out. And so showdown. That's again, slightly different, but Dallas, Texas guys, Dallas. I don't know if you know this, <laughs> But something, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I don't want to say, hey, you got hackers in Dallas. <laughs> that should be a movie. <laughs> but maybe something is compromised over there. I don't know. Because a lot of these kind of seem to be, you know, doing their thing. Also, this FileZilla um, FTP open... And of course, a classic RDP open to the internet. Right on, guys. Throw security out the window. Who needs it? Can we, like, reach that page? If I, if I curl this, is that going to, like, get all wonk? It's dead. Supposedly. Supposedly it's dead. Okay. Okie dokie. Um, let's keep Googling around on WSH rat. Wait. Wait. Yori, any rat. Security affairs. Fortinet, again. Brut post. These are the same, I think... These are pretty close to the same things that we saw earlier. What's up with my cursor, guys? Come on now. I don't need help finding my cursor. Although I appreciate it. Yeah, check in there. Look at our website. Buy bit <laughs> Buy us with Bitcoin. Shall go to the equation now. I want to see the code. Oh. This doesn't look like what we were looking at. I'll be honest. WSH at core. Yeah, that's not what we've been looking at. Oh, those posts though. Some paste bin. Nope, 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 nope. Maybe this isn't WSH rad, because if it has all that functionality and like we just didn't know. Yeah. Let's go back to this though. These don't look like they're the same.
everything that we've kind of seen W script wise doesn't seem to do that. I think. Is that IP address the same as ours? We had a 193, no, 194. Yeah. I keep messing that up. Scrolling through that again. No. No, I don't think so. Threat post had a portion on WSH rat. Um, no. These, these just don't seem to be the same. WSH rat, check it out. Some spam emails. Okay. Okay, I'm done with that. Yep. Dunzo. Let's go check out that last one. I guess. All right, let's check out our e-file transmitter. Let's make directory for e-file transmitter and then move that e-file transmitter VDBS into that directory. Now we can hop over there and take a look. Woo! This one's fun. It just seems to decode some base64. Oh, wow. This is its own, like, this is an implementation of base64 in Visual Basic Script. That's neat. I'm swiping that. <laughs> I'm going to add that to my toolkit. I don't know about you. Cool. And then it just straight up executes it. So that's kind of cheesy. Uh, let's call this variable base64 code. Yeah. And let's call this variable decoded base64. Uh, bunch of V's. And then we execute it. So all we have to do is straight up decode this. Poop that in. Base64 attack D. We'll decode that to 0 2, like stage, uh, second stage or whatever. Second stage dot BBS. What do you got? It's the exact same code, it's literally identical. This is this is the exact same thing as what we just saw. Different different IP address, different port. Are you still over in Dallas? Don't don't be over in Dallas, buddy. I'm really bummed. No, is that the same? That's the same. It's just a different port. Oh shoot, I wonder if I wonder if that IP address is on. Let's see if that route is still active. No. Lamos. One day we'll get a live one, guys. One day. This is the exact same code, though. Download function, HWD function. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's still the exact same thing. Well, um... I don't think there's a whole lot else to this. It's just, it's interesting that that one used Visual Basic Script while the other just used some strange XOR thing. So there's got to be some tidbit to it. But that's all. I think that's all I kind of wanted to uh, go through. So I'm fading out, not going to lie. Uh, that was a bad video because it was just kind of chilling, just kind of me goofing off, just kind of me doing whatever. I don't know if that's actually helpful or useful for people. So please let me know in the comments. You know? <laughs> weird kind of video but i figured hey you know what we try it just to uh just to record stuff so. thanks so much for watching everybody if i do actually upload this <laughs> bye <laughs>